Hi everyone, Luke here from Apple Online Academy and today I want to show you how to free up some space on your Mac. There are several places on the Mac where you can clean things up and save some space. You don't need to install any programs, you don't need to download anything for doing that. You just need to know where to look. I want to split this video in two parts. In the first one we'll be cleaning with recommendation and the other one will be doing some other stuff manually. So if you are familiar with this basic storage managing, you can skip to the other half of the video where we'll go deeper in some system files and system folders to clean things up. I have to say that before you start deleting something, it's a good idea to make a backup. Maybe make a complete backup using Time Machine. Because anything you delete during this process, if you don't have a backup, there will be no way how to get it back. Now let's walk through how to free up some space with recommendations. First, let's check how much storage you have by going to the Apple menu, selecting About this Mac and then clicking the Storage tab. Here you'll see how much storage you have and which types of files are taking up the most space. This might take a moment to load, usually there is a big piece taken by other. First of all it's because it's still loading and other is basically anything what is not classified as a movie, app, audio, photo or backup. So this includes some documents, system files and other stuff. And it can be sometimes tricky to locate it, but I'm gonna be showing you how to find and delete some of them. Next, when it loads up, click Manage to see some recommendations for freeing up space. If iCloud is already turned on, your first recommendation will be store in iCloud. So click on it. And then select what you would like to store there. You can choose desktop and documents, photos, messages. You can decide what you want to store in iCloud. Storing files in iCloud uses the space in your cloud storage plan. So you might need to upgrade depending on what you choose. Next, if you click Optimize Storage, you can remove TV shows and movies you have purchased from the iTunes Store and you've already watched it. Of course, you'll be able to download this again if you need to. Another recommendation here is to turn on empty trash automatically. Files you've moved to the trash will be permanently deleted after 30 days. I think it makes sense to turn it on because sometimes you might forget about the files and they are sitting in the bin. You can get to the same options if you are in Finder and select Finder Preferences. And here in the Advanced tab, click Remove Items from the bin after 30 days. I already have it selected, it's a handy feature. And the last one here is to reduce clutter. If you press it, it will help you quickly identify large files, downloads and apps you might no longer need. You can also free up some space manually in these categories on the site, like in Applications, Documents, you can clean up messages, music and so on. You can of course sort it by size here to see which files are taken the most. Then just select which one you want to delete. It's pretty basic and fast to clean things up like this. I do it regularly, but I guess you came here to find some secret hidden files, so let's see that. Now let's start by looking at some backups of your iOS devices. There could be some old backups and they can be taking up a considerably amount of space. Well, you'll find a lot of people advising you to look for these, but they don't really tell you where. Before macOS Catalina, they were stored under iTunes, but now it's different. Now Finder is where you should be looking, because this is the proper place to delete them. First connect your device and come here in the Finder. On the sidebar here, you will see your iPhone. and the General tab, click Manage Backups to see a list of your backups. From here, you can right-click it and delete what you want. Well, my iPhone has 256GB, so imagine I store the backup here. It will take a lot of space, so instead I use iCloud. I use iCloud backups and I save there some important files I need. So I think it's cheaper to pay a few dollars for the iCloud than paying hundreds of dollars for getting a bigger space. Next location is very obvious, and that's your trash. It can accumulate sometimes a lot of files. Well, if you went through the first part with the recommendations, we said already, that the bin will be cleaning after 30 days. But imagine I just delete some project, I just delete a project in Final Cut and it has 100 gigabytes and it will be sitting in the trash for another 30 days. So I think it makes sense to clean it up manually when you know about some big files you have deleted. And it's as easy as just right click the bin or press Shift Command Delete and it's all done. Another place which you have right next to the bin is your downloads. A lot of time people leave things here which they don't need anymore. You're downloading some app, you have the installer there, you install the app, maybe you uninstall the app, you don't use it anymore, but you forgot about the installer. You have some invoices or some emails, you just download, you check it once and you don't need it anymore. 
So this is another place you can quickly go through and delete what you don't need anymore. And one more place we should check before we go to system folders is your photos. Your photos library is another place that can be taking a lot of space. I am taking a lot of photos with my iPhone and imagine I have it synchronized. It will bring another like 60 gigabytes, 60 gigabytes of photos which will be taken from my Mac storage. This is the reason why I completely excluded the synchronization. As you can see on the screen, I don't have any photos there. But a lot of people like the convenience that you just take a picture and instantly you have it on your Mac and you can work with it. But you don't need to necessarily turn this off completely like I did. You can first go to Photos Preferences. And here on the iCloud tab, you can choose Synchronize iCloud Photos, but you can select Optimize Mac Storage. That means that your photos will still be synchronized between your devices, but the full resolution pictures will be stored on iCloud, so you will see only thumbnails and download these pictures only when you need it. Just to note that if you turn it on, it will not immediately save your space. It will take some time before it optimizes. It might even take days or weeks before you see some difference in your storage. And another thing to note is that you will need internet connection if you want to access these files again. Because you kind of have just the previews in the computer. So if you want to get it, if you want to reach it full resolution for us, you need to download them. I can give you one more suggestion. If you want to have it, if you want to have it synchronized, you want to have it downloaded in the computer, you can at least exclude the videos. You can keep all of your photos and exclude the videos, especially if you recorded some high frame rates or 4K videos, they can take up a lot of space. So I would recommend to just put them on some other storage and don't take the space on the Mac. And when I'm talking about photos, there is one more place you could check. You can close the app and go to Finder again, go under Pictures, if you don't see these folders here, you can go to find the preferences and on the sidebar, you select it here. So make sure the pictures are selected. And here you see photos library. If you see only one, it's all fine. But if you have a Mac for a while, it's possible that there will be more of them. There might be some old one or even an iPhoto library. So you might want to get that off your drive and save some space as well. These are quite obvious locations, so let's check some other specific folders in the system. I usually don't dive in these, but you can save some space on that as well. Let's have a look. So in Finder on Desktop, choose Go menu, press the Option key down, which will review Library, and then select it. Under Library, look for Application Support, and here it's better to switch on the List view to see the sizes as well. If you don't see the sizes, go to View menu and select Show the Option or press Command J. And here select Calculate or Sizes. Now you see even the folders have the sizes calculated. Now if I press here I will have it sort by size. Now you see what is taking a lot of space. You might see some mobile synchronization here. You might see some apps listed here that you no longer use or you have deleted already. In this case feel free to get rid of it. You can delete the whole folder. But in general you don't necessarily need to get rid of this unless you know what it really is. What is taking up the most space here is the first one. If I go into it, I found out that this is actually my recordings. So it's not bad to save some gigabytes just looking in this place. Now we can go back to the library folder and the next one we'll look at caches. Let's do the same thing, press command J and calculate our sizes and sort them by size. As you can see they are not as big. The biggest one is here from Google, so probably Chrome caches, which is taking half of the gigabyte. I can clean this up. But here is where you're usually getting a bad advice. Everybody is telling you clean up your caches, delete it, it will save the space. But it's not entirely true. Caches are actually here to speed things up. They are useful. And even if you clean this up and then you use the application, if you use it often, then it will take the space back again. So you don't necessarily need to come here and delete it all the time. Again, if you find here an app you have already deleted, you don't need these caches anymore. Even though they might be saved some password, some other settings, so if you install the app again, it will be easier to set it up. But if you are sure you don't need it, then delete it. As I said before, I don't really dive in these folders very often. But after some time, it makes sense to check it out. If you deleted an app, it might have left some folder here, it might have left some caches, and you can save a few gigabytes on it as well. As you see, this is not a big deal, there are a few gigabytes. But the biggest problem might be some old forgotten files. But there is a fast way how to find them. Again, go to this Go menu and select Home. And here press Command F 
and this way you can basically search your entire Mac for the big files. Here it's not gonna be kind, I will select file size is greater than let's say 500 megabytes and here I found I have quite many of these files. By deleting each of them I'm saving half a gigabyte of space. I'm seeing here a lot of videos I have stored, things I don't need anymore. And see how many files I have here. It can save a lot of gigabytes of space. So this way I can find all the big files and delete them, get rid of it. But if you really don't want to delete it, get yourself some external drive or use advantage of the iCloud and store important files there so you will still have them accessible whenever you need. Do you struggle with the space on your Mac? I do have a problem with storage all the time and there are so many other hidden things around your Mac. So if you want to know more about your Mac, subscribe to the Apple Online Academy channel and also check out the complete macOS course if you like these kind of videos. I'll leave you a link in the description. Anyway, this is Luke and I will see you again 